What's up guys, this is Forrest Knight and welcome to IW Journey episode 16. Now last week, or two weeks ago, we went over creating the UI for the Party Rock, Party Rock Mansion app. And I told you this week we're going to be doing the embedding of the YouTube videos. And that's, that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to be hard coding the YouTube videos in there. So basically, we have the app UI and in the table view, each cell is going to be generated with a new video. It's going to be hard coded in there as of right now just because we're going over the basics. And this is basically where we're going to leave the Party Rock Mansion. All of this stuff is on GitHub, so if you wish to you know, add on to this Party Rock Mansion app, go ahead on my GitHub, linked in the description, and change it. Uh, add whatever you want to it. Uh, make it more efficient. It doesn't matter. Fork it. And I'll most likely approve of the fork if it's something you know, that's good and, and contributes to the application. So we made four different Swift files in three different folders, our model, view, and controller, of course. First off in our model, we have partyrock.swift. And this is us declaring and initializing our variables, our image URL, our video URL, and our video title, initializing it down here, of course. And our view folder has our partycell.swift file with our update UI function, and also dispatched queue global asynchronous, which asynchronous is where in this case it's downloading images on a background thread so it doesn't freeze the app so you don't load everything right onto the app or else it'll run really slow and potentially freeze we load it on a background thread so the app runs more smoothly now we have inside of our controller folder folder our main vc and our video vc our main vc is where we have p1 p2 this is all of our cells so this is where we are taking our image url video url and video title out of, uh, you know, taking the URL, taking all the information off of the internet and putting it into our app. And we're pinning it all to Party Rocks. And we have our table view delegate data source. And then we have a bunch of uh, table view uh, information where this is where most of the work happens. And then we update our UI using cell.updateUI. We update each cell. And down here, is where we have our other so let's come over here notice the segue so this is where we were before this is our segue so that function allows this segue to work when we click on this cell or whatever cell it may be and then it loads up everything into our other view controller which is the video VC but we're in main VC right now of course still and this is that this is that function our override function where it sends us to that and it uses the appropriate it up, uploads the appropriate video for the whatever we clicked whatever cell we clicked which is declared here and now in our video VC file this is where we have our web view to load our HTML string which loads up the video and I think it loads up the uh, title as well let's check so say we have lights out over here if we want to click on that see it loads lights out and then it'll load up a video right here See now the video is loaded up and it's off the screen and whatnot. That's something we could work with inside the UI. But this, it, it's basically we have it so we can click on this and we can play it. And of course my video is being really slow today so we're gonna, you can see that it's loading and whatnot. Actually our, my Wi-Fi was out this morning so I don't know if it's still, something's still wrong with the Wi-Fi and whatnot. But let's come on back to here. We went over party rock file, party cell file main VC file and our video VC file and that's what we get we we you saw the what it was loaded up here before we had all of our cells it was only those five I couldn't scroll because we only created five in our main VC file see one two three four five maybe if we made more we'd be able to scroll and then when you click on one of those cells it brings you here you just saw all that happen and that's really how we in this app hard-coded those YouTube videos into our application. So you have, have anything like a blog or whatnot, you could do something similar and just have one video and embed it into your post or into your app however you wish. So that's it. That's how we embedded the YouTube video into our application, the Party Rock Mansion one. I understand there's different ways, maybe better ways in certain situations to embed a video, but I'm sure you got some value out of this if you just want one simple video into your application. And it's good to know different ways to do things. So if I just wanted something so simple. I think this is more simple than some alternative that may be better if I were to pick some type of random video. It, it, it's all different, it's all variable, so I think this is very helpful for anyone who wants to throw a YouTube video into their application. 
Remember, you will be accessing the internet every single time you use this, you know, I'm loads that video. So I say embedded in, it's embedded in, but it's not saved in your application. So keep that in mind. So if you haven't been keeping up with my 100 Days of Code Challenge videos, then you wouldn't know that I'm working on this one application in the Udemy course called Dreamlister. I go, I'd go more in detail about it in those videos, but I'll be talking about it, I think, in two weeks of iDev Journey. And I want next week to be more business oriented because I haven't talked about business stuff in iDev Journey or any videos in a while. Because you know you can't just make an app, throw it on the app store, and expect it to do well. There's a whole lot of other things: marketing, business side of things, making sure what you can protect is protected, like your application name, your logo. What if someone else comes and takes your logo and then they get it copyrighted, like officially copyrighted, and you're kind of SOL? Then that that kind of stinks. So you got to make sure you're protected in every way that you can. If you can get some type of software patent on your application, that's good too. There's a whole lot of details that I may talk about in iDev Journey. I don't know what exactly I'll be talking about next week, but it's going to be something on the business side of things as opposed to the development side of things. Expect that next week. I'll be going over the whole Dreamlister app in two weeks, I believe. Don't hold me to it, but that's the plan. I know I'm tracking it all 100 Days of Code Challenge, but that's more of a recap of what I coded that day. It's a little different. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Let me know either way. It helps me out a lot. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you out a little bit. So until next time, have a good one.